What's up YouTube? Boss Vlogs coming to you with a fresh vlog for 2023. It's my first vlog of the year. I appreciate your patience. Um, today's video is gonna be straightforward. I got the Maroni label here. We'll cover what it took to build my 2022 Porsche Taycan, as well as talk about what's been going on, uh, which has caused some of the delays with the video. So, uh, long story short, I actually created several videos to put up back in, I wanna say either October or November. It was not too long after I got my car and after I shot the most recent video, then I shot a reel and then I actually shot content. But um, my mom went into the ICU and so she's still in there as of today. Uh, hopefully she's going home this week. It's been a long, 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 long stretch of, uh, stretch of the last few months. So. Yeah, that's where my time and efforts have been. Family comes first more than anything, but I also wanted to make sure I was giving you guys good quality content. I actually did produce a video that was going over the build of my car, but instead of breaking that up, I actually went and transitioned directly into building a car on Porsche's website, building a Porsche Taycan, and talking through the options and, and such. And so really, I don't want to be in a position where I'm putting out content that's super long and you don't really have the opportunity to you know, enjoy it for what it is. So I want to make it in two parts. So this first part is going to be strictly about how my car was built and what that cost. The second video is going to be me actually going through the configurator on Porsche's website, building a Porsche Taycan and talking through the, what that process was like and some of the things that you may or may not want to consider if you are thinking about building a car. So that's what I have for you today. I appreciate your time. Stay tuned for any updates. We're going to jump right into this and get on. To I can't start this video without first addressing this nice Porsche Motorsport Polo that was given to me by a close friend of mine. Rick, I appreciate you. Rick gave me this polo the day I took delivery of the Taycan. And uh, this is the second time I've worn it. I wore it in the original video that I'm actually not going to post where I did the, uh, the label and such. So I wanted to be able to put it on. Um, one, because I've lost a little weight since this, uh, since delivery of the vehicle. So this feels a lot better. But also, man, this is an official Porsche shirt. This isn't a replica or anything like that. My good friend spent some hard earned money on this shirt and I want to be able to represent it well. So Rick, I appreciate you. Hopefully this Hellcat of yours will be back on the road soon so we can get some pictures going. But let's jump into the Maroni label or Maroni label or however you say it. When I took delivery of the car, my Porsche sales rep or representative made sure to tell me that this document is something that you want to make sure you do not lose. Now, through the Porsche website, when you log into your account, um, you can get this printed out, but this pretty much contains all of the information on your car, from the build, every feature you've added, what it cost at the time, and what your total price was for this vehicle. So I guess if you're going to be selling your vehicle or potentially maybe selling your vehicle, this helps know exactly, hey, what you have. I mean, you can run a VIN, but I think that just providing this and it matches up to the VIN, is easier um, I just think so so we'll go over everything that I added onto this car to give you guys some context I ordered the 2022 Porsche Taycan on December 1st that's the day I went into the dealership and put down my deposit I built the car probably two weeks prior and came in and paid my deposit December 1st is when it was ordered I took delivery of the car on April 2nd yeah April 2nd uh, 2022 and the original delivery date, I believe, was March 9th. Now, if you guys remember the Felicity Ace and issues that happened with that, as you can imagine, that did have some delay in me getting my car. Also, my car was built and finished in January of 2022, and it set at the port of Eden, Emden, Eden, however you say it, for about a month or so um, with no updates. And so, that's one of the tough parts about having any car built is if they give you a tracker and you're trying to track the status of it, there's times where you're not gonna have updates for quite some time and you're gonna be wondering what the heck is going on. That's exactly what happened in my situation with this car. Um, I do remember going to the Lakers game when they played the Hornets and that was when they said, hey, your cars arrived at, at the port and then things kind of went ghost and then that's of course when things started to transpire. 
But safe to say my car was not on that ship. My understanding it was supposed to be on that ship. For whatever reason, it didn't get on there. I'm not questioning it. There were two cars from the dealership I purchased mine at here in Greensboro, but they were not client orders, which was a good thing. Um, I'm glad I went with the Taycan because the Panamera, had I went with that, production was set to start in March. Our production started on the Taycan in January. And with the Felicity Ace, I can guarantee you, I probably would have just been taking delivery of that car. Because as you probably are aware, they pretty much put the people orders who were on that boat ahead of anything else to make sure that, you know, they're doing everything they can to get those out. Mix that in with the uh, issues with supply chain and, and, and demand and all of those things, and you're getting a lot of delays. So yeah, fortunate to get this car in, but I ordered it on December 1st. And the features that I have in this car, so this is the real wheel drive Porsche Taycan. Um, I didn't want the all wheel drive 4S. I felt like the 4S wasn't worth the bump up in, in the premium. Now, that was when I started to look at this car. After I've added on, you'll see close to $30,000 of uh, add-ons, I probably could have went and got a, a 4S and maybe I would have paid about the same or maybe I would have come off uh, even or a little bit more on the 4S side, but still is a fun car to drive. 469 horsepower, 350 kilowatts with overboost. Um, I did upgrade the battery. So that was one of the first upgrades I did on the car. Uh, no, I lied. The first upgrade I did on the car was the paint. I went from the regular base white paint to the Carrera white metallic paint. I saw that on the forest, fell in love with it. Um, so I wanted that on the car. So my car, the base, now this has changed just since I ordered my car, the base is the Taycans on all models have gone up. Um, but the base at the time for mine was $82,700. So that was the base price of my Taycan, Taycan, Taycan out the gate, okay? Before any features, upgrades, taxes, titles, all those good things added on. And like I said, the first thing I did was I put the Carrera white metallic paint on there. Uh, they spelled Carrera wrong, C-A-R-A-R-A. C-R-E-R-A, nonetheless. Uh, Carrera White Metallic was the upgraded uh, paint that I wanted on the Taycan. That upgrade cost me 800 bucks, okay? I did keep the interior standard black, uh, black leather interior. I was thinking about going with the Bordeaux Red, but decided not to go with that. I'm thankful I did. Um, my wife really wanted that color in the car, but I feel like a, just a, a black, the way that this car uh, looked when it was uh, a concept car called the Mission E, that white and black contrast, I just wanted to keep things simple. Plus, this is the very first car I've ever ordered brand new. Not necessarily just a Porsche, but period. First car I've ever ordered brand new. What I can tell you about the Porsche configurator, and you'll see this in the second video, is that if you're not careful, you can get caught up in building a vehicle, and before you know it, you're over budget. Um, it's a fun thing to do to build a car. If you don't have a budget, it's even better. But if you do, it's still tough because you're making sacrifices, weighing in your options and such. So the other thing that was free was the deletion of the model um, in the rear. So when I was building this car, I felt like when you remove Taycan off of it, it just looked better. Also, I feel like it promotes conversation because one of the biggest issues with driving a Taycan, especially for those who aren't aware, is that they think that you're driving a Panamera because it's four doors. And the only four door Porsche that people recognize, rightfully so, is the Panamera. And I wanted to have, just have that conversation, but also I felt like it just looked clean. It just looked better, not having the model. And uh, the fact that it was free, I'm like, man, I I'd hate to have it on there, then want to take it off, then you gotta pay, and then who knows what it leaves behind. I'm not familiar with what it takes to put a rear designation on the back of a car, but I just felt like, hey, if the factory doesn't have to put it on there, then it's clean from the get-go. So, zero dollars on the model designation. Uh, this next option, this was uh, highly suggested by my wife, and that's the ionizer. That costs $350. So the ionizer, it's like an advanced filter system, filtration system in your car that you know filters out the nasty stuff in the air, but also takes it another level. So it's just a better filter, better system. 
And honestly, with two asthmatics in my home, it, it's actually a good feature. Um, and I feel like, and I could be wrong, but the, the smell of a Porsche, the new car smell, I've had this car now for what, nine, 10 months now, and I still smell it. And it's not a faint smell, it's still a strong, brand new car smell. And so I, I think that is part of the filtration system. It could be just their filtration system anyway, but I feel like the ionizer helps out. If you know better than me, you know more, by all means, put some information in the comment section and enlighten me. But I think that that's, you know, not a bad option, $350. Um, the next feature was the power charge port cover. So this is something that I wanted to have. It's where you can, you have two ports on the side of your Tycon. So you have AC and DC for fast charging. Um, AC you can charge on either side, DC only on the passenger side. And so if you don't add these doors on there, pretty much you just have these two, uh, I like to say like your fuel covers. You press them, pops open, you plug in, you charge, you close it. So, well with the electric doors, there's little black pieces on the side and I'll put up a, a small video here for you to see. You swipe your finger underneath and actually the doors are electric, they go up. And so then you can plug in when it's done, it goes down. Now, that is a very cool feature. However, one drawback from having the electric doors versus not is that on the side of the Taycan there are two rear vents. So if you kind of think aerodynamics, car is going fast and you're trying to get it's less drag and it just cut through the wind like a knife through hot knife through butter you want to make sure your car is aerodynamically fit as possible to, to be, basically become the most efficient well if you have the Tycon without the electric doors those vents on the side are actually functional if you have the electric doors they're not so that does impact drag on the car um, so it was a feature that I paid what I say 640 bucks for I still think it was worth it so I actually like it now there are some issues sensor wise as you can imagine with a car that's that tech heavy uh, they get random issues but uh, the concern people have brought to my attention in the past has been hey what happens if it doesn't work the doors don't go up I haven't had that issue yet but there are emergency features to get that open so I feel pretty confident that that was a feature to add. The next thing, uh, the fixed panoramic roof and glass. So this was where we're starting to get into the more pricier options. So panoramic roof, uh, being able to look through the ceiling, man, I can say that that is a feature I am glad I added. That feature was $1,490. Now, here's a fun fact about the Tycon. If you do not option the glass roof and just go with the regular aluminum roof, you actually get just a little bit less headroom in the back. So this isn't something I was considering when optioning this vehicle with this, but it was nice to know, hey, from a taller teammates and friends of mine that do ride with us, um, they got a little bit more room above. Uh, they don't have to worry about hitting their head. Now, some of them are still tall, so they, it wouldn't really matter. But even then, the Tycon, although it's four-door, it's a very tight fit from a foot perspective because that leg room is not much. I mean, I'm probably showing you exactly how much leg room you have. Now, once you're in, you're sitting down in the car and sitting back, but it's really more about your, your feet and space. And so uh, the head space, the few inches, the few inches, I feel like it's good. But then also it's just something about being able to have that extra light come through the car. Uh, my daughter loves it. She loves looking through it. Um, at night, I started to dim the ambient light. So if it's a pretty clear night where you can see the stars, she loves, she loves looking through and seeing the stars. So good feature. A little bit on the expensive side, but felt like it was worth it. And also, it just creates this nice sleek black look from the top down on the car. So, pretty good feature. So, this is going to be my second to most expensive option. And this is my 21-inch RS Spider Design Wheels. $5,070. Let me tell you, these wheels are amazing. When I spec the car, I wanted these. It was nothing else I was considering. Sometimes when you look at options, you have a whole bunch of different decisions to make and you're trying to weigh them. That was not the case with these rims. I really am not a fan of most of the rims on the configurator. And when I recently looked, there are a lot less options. The RS Spider wheels you can get with the monochromatic bad Porsche Crest, or you can have the regular Porsche Crest color in the middle. I guess I optioned for the monochromatic, which I'm glad I did because I wanted to keep that theme. But I was thrown off because in the configurator, 
it shows up as monochromatic in the track your vehicle progress it was the opposite when i go into the app i believe it's uh still showing the regular colored porsche crest and so i was nervous to see like which option did i have but apparently it was an option um, so i'm glad i chose the right one so that is a nice nice wheel uh, of course i have big tires in the back 305s pirelli uh, p0s those summer tires were amazing um, shortly after my last video i believe i went and got all seasons or i may have got all seasons right before i shot that video and they're okay but i definitely can tell the difference versus having purely dedicated summer tires so as you can imagine as things start heating up north carolina heats up pretty much even during the winter right now it's like 65 and two weeks ago it was like seven uh, once it's consistent warmer temperatures i'm gonna go back and buy another set of the pirelli p0s the drawback to those is the life expectancy mileage we're talking about 15 to 20 thousand miles not much at all and i definitely went through and burned through them um, i got all the way up to 19,000 and didn't have any slippage or anything but glad that you know i was active on the forums and, and understood that hey it was time to swap those things out so love the tire definitely looking forward to going back to it but the rims i feel like they just complement the car and honestly i've seen one tycon with those rims and it had the colored badge when i took my car to another dealership for a quick look at a service since i was in town there was a sales associate there who had his own order and said he had the same wheels as mine but i have yet to see in person anybody with the monochromatic badge with the spider rims so I like to think that that's a nice little touch to my vehicle. The Mission E-Wheels, I will say, have grown on me. I've seen them a lot more. I do think that if there is a car, a color combination that that wheel will go with is the Carrera White. Um, but I feel like if you at least color the Mission E-Wheels to the body color, then it looks good regardless. But it's when you have like a Mamba Green uh, Tycon and then you have the white Mission E-Wheels, it's kind of like, uh, but I guess I could see why a lot of people like the Mission E wheels. That's what was on the Mission E um, when, when they had it in concept mode. So yeah, $5,070. Uh, another feature, power folding exterior mirrors, $330. So that was the ability, of course, as you can imagine, to have my mirrors fold um, when I lock my car. Um, it's something that I wanted because people drive reckless nowadays and I just wanted the ability to have that fold in. Also, if there's a tight fit, that little bit of space just helps. And so, you know, not the most extravagant option, but an option that I felt like was necessary. I do feel like it should have been standard, but if it wasn't, uh, it may have been standard on the other models, but it was 330 for me. Sport Chrono Package, $1,320. So, interesting thing about this feature is that when I originally built the car and sent my code over to my uh, Porsche representative, when I went in to pretty much pay my deposit, he wanted to go through the configurator with me one more time to talk through certain options to consider. Also to say, hey, these are the things you want to think about. It's your first Porsche. Uh, Sport Chrono was a feature that I didn't really speak on, but I really did not care for it. I did not care for that clock in the center of the dash. I did not. Now I can tell you, I don't think I'll ever order a Porsche without it. So I'm glad that it was suggested because although I'm still not big on the clock, seeing the Taycan without it just was like, ugh. And the steering wheel that you get with the Sport Chrono package allows you to change the drive modes on the, on the steering wheel. And my understanding is, if you guys know better than me, correct me in the comments, please, but that you cannot get to Sport Plus mode without Sport Chrono because of the dial. I think the most sportiest mode you can go into is just regular Sport mode without it as you go through the PCM. But I could be wrong, because I know that right now, if I go through the PCM, and that's just you know the, the software for the uh, the Tycon. I can choose Sport Plus without having to change the drive mode. So I don't know if that's a feature that comes with it and you need it, but uh, I'm glad I went with that steering wheel. Also, that steering wheel, I think they call it the GT steering wheel. It's a nice fit, um, a little bit more um, bustier than what I've seen on the regular Tycon. So it was a feature that I think was well worth the recommendation and well worth the $1,320. Uh, the next feature that was not necessarily the priciest, but it was something that I made a sacrifice for, and that's the Bose surround sound system. And that cost me 1,200 bucks either. That was a feature that I really wanted because 
I know what products Bose brings to the table. I know what quality they bring to the table on all of their products from home entertainment to uh, you know, headphones, you name it. They bring quality products to, to the forefront. And so that was something that I said, hey, I definitely want at minimum to have. The Burmeister system, I think that thing was like 11 grand. So although I'm a sound geek, I love to listen to music. My daughter loves to listen to music, listen to podcasts. CNBC, as you can imagine, as a financial advisor, that's what I'm pumping on my radio in the mornings and also when I'm coming home like I did today, just getting caught up. Uh, I just didn't think it was worth that, that price. And I could be wrong, but I believe it's closer to double digits, excuse me, five digits. So uh, yeah, I love sound, but not that much. So that Bordeaux red interior, I substituted that for the Bose surround sound system because at that time they were pretty close in price. So $1,200 even. Then I got the 25 foot charging cable, that's zero dollars. You'll see why that was zero dollars here in a second. Um, Porsche Electric Sport Sound, 500 bucks. When I tell you that I love Porsche Electric Sound, it's amazing. My understanding is that the sound that we're hearing when you drive, so electric vehicles, if you're not aware, must emit a noise up to, I believe it's 19 feet for safety reasons high pitch noise is usually what it sounds like but it can't be completely silent because well, they don't make sounds like the regular combustion engine so there's a I forgot the name of it but there's a sound that the EV is going to emit regardless sport sound electric sport sound is taking it a step further it allows your car to sound like a spaceship pretty much uh, when you're in normal in sport mode, it has a, a unique sound. When you're in sport plus, it's definitely a different sound. And when you're in range mode at lower speeds, it's definitely a more aggressive humming noise, um, but to the point where it's gonna turn heads. I love that feature. And for those who say, oh, it's a fake sound, blah, 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 not necessarily. My understanding is that that's a sound that's emitting from the motor. I could be wrong, but at the same time, it's unique. It's not a sound, it's not imitating a real car sound, which is what I like, because then it's like, well, why don't I just get a real car? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I like that. Um, I also would say that if you haven't heard one, if I can get it, some video on it, I'll, I'll post it. Uh, sometimes you may hear it when I'm in the car vlogging, if I'm driving, it's a very nice sound and it just makes it feel like you're still driving a vehicle, although one from Star Wars. So yeah, Porsche Electric Sound, well worth the 500 bucks. Performance Battery Plus, this is the most expensive option on my car. This is adding a bigger battery for increased range, but also for increased horsepower. One of the reasons why I went with it. And that was uh, uh, Performance Battery Plus, adding pretty much 93.4 kilowatt hours of, uh, of, of energy. That was $5,780 to, to option. And uh, although expensive, glad I did it because I daily drive the Taycan and I'm all over the place today i'm just still under 23,000 miles so as you can imagine i drive that car a lot the 19.2 kilowatt onboard charger 1680 dollars this is a feature to allow the battery to charge faster uh, to take on more charge uh, so this was something that was highly suggested for me to add i added it wasn't really too sure of what it did but what i can say is from what I read in the forums, when I stop at Electrify America, although rare, I don't have issues getting up to that full DC fast charging speed. And I do believe that your onboard charger has a, a role in that, as well as just the charger in itself, uh, depending on your location. So a good feature to have. Mobile charger connect, $1,120. So this ties back to that 25 foot cable. The mobile charger connect, when you buy a Porsche Taycan, by default, as you can imagine, Get a charging dock. Um, it's real slim, got some buttons on it. You get a plug installed, um, or you can use a regular plug, which is gonna take forever to charge the car. Uh, I got what's called an EMA 1450 plug. You can pretty much look at it like a dryer plug um, installed in the garage, and that allows me to charge up to uh, nine and a half kilowatt hours, so 40 amps. Uh, that charges my car probably if I'm at 50% within six hours. So if I'm home for the night, plug it in. I know when I wake up in the morning, I'm good to go 100% or 85% wherever you keep your battery. Um, the mobile charger connect pretty much 
was a, an enhanced version of the charger. It had Wi-Fi capabilities, it had profile capabilities, more data. Uh, it connects to my network at the home so I can see, you know, I can pr protect the IP address and just have more functionality. Um, so I option that and by default, you get a 25 foot cable for free when you uh, option that charger. There is a drawback to it uh, ever since September when they announced the big update to the Porsche PCM. Uh, we all had to take in our mobile connect chargers, which I thought was weird at first. And pretty much what happened is they updated the software on it to pretty much dial back what the amps it can charge at. So I would always have mine set to 40 amps. It automatically by default goes to 20. I can still increase it, but they added warning labels and everything because what was happening is people were starting to see their cables get really hot, overheating, and they think it's an issue with the charger. I've never had that issue. The cable has gotten warm, but never to the point where I couldn't pick it up. Somebody in the forum already yesterday couldn't even touch theirs. And I can see that being the case in warmer temps, being that we're in the winter, I'm not really concerned about that. So I can, if I need to increase the amps, if not, then yeah, that seven hour charge that I'm accustomed to can now be a 10 hour or so charge. Um, depending on, on the state of the battery, the, the temperature and such. So that was one drawback. So people are wanting a refund, I'm not gonna lie. What did I say, $1,120 to only be able to use it for four months in its capacity. Yeah, I, I probably want my money back, but I'm not gonna pressure Porsche on it, things happen, but you know, hopefully they have an update or something soon to where they can get the thermal management on par so that we don't have these issues. So we're almost done, guys. So. The next thing was ambient lighting, 500 bucks. So ambient light package in the car, I didn't really keep it on one color, so I, I don't know if necessarily I, it was worth paying for it, because I don't know if you get any lighting in the car um, that's in ambient nature without this, this option. But ambient light, pretty much there's lights in my cup holders, all four doors, the foot wells of the car, um, under the center console, and pretty much you can change it various colors, turquoise, regular blue, red, orange, white, green. Um, there are more colors you can get, but the trick is you have to have all, me, you have to have album artwork that will pretty much I think, create the, the color. So nothing where we can kind of mix and match our ambient light colors just yet, but hopefully that's coming because I think purple will look the best in that car. I've seen it a couple times due to some cover art, but man, I'm not trying to listen to the same song just to get purple. My daughter always asks for me to change it. The beauty of the ambient light package is that you can go to dynamic lighting, which means that it will change the ambient light based on the cover art. So if I'm listening to an album that's green in nature, I have green ambient lighting. If the very next track is blue, as you can imagine, it'll change the blue automatically. Those lights get pretty bright, so I've turned them down to maybe 10 to 20% in most of the cases. So uh, a, good, a good feature nonetheless. I think it was a, a good $500 well spent. And then three years of 30 minute DC charging sessions with Electrify America, Big Fat Zero. One thing I do love about Porsche is that I get three years free of charging at Electrify America. Now, I don't charge as much at those locations, but it's nice to have. Also, even though I'm not paying for it, I still get to see what the price is. So if I was to charge, a lot of the times, man, I'm saving so much money versus fuel, uh, getting gasoline. I'm talking about ten dollars maybe for a 30 minute charge and that 30 minute charge is what's getting me to pretty much full battery and i can operate and be, and be good to go so even if porsche didn't elect to give us three years of 30 minute charging i still think it's a, a, a good way to go if you like to be able to look at evs so total price processing and handling fees uh well delivery process and handling fees came to 1350 bucks okay my car was delivered to the port of Jacksonville and then shipped up to here in Greensboro. The total price of my car came to $104,830, okay? Now, that was the total price of the car. That is not including taxes and titles and such. When all of that was done, when I signed the paperwork and paid my money, it came to about 110. So, we look at just purely features Actually, it wasn't there. It's twenty-two thousand one hundred and thirty dollars worth of upgrades. So, not too bad, but you know, as you can imagine, you can get very creative. There's a lot more you can do, and this this number can, can climb. Um, 
One thing I like about the Maruni label is that they have this fuel economy. So 80 miles uh, per gallon in the city and 71 on the highway, 45 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, um, annual fuel costs of 900 bucks. So I'm saving $3,000 in fuel costs over five years compared to the average new vehicle, which is fine. Um, I didn't buy this car to be, uh, I think sometimes they call them tree huggers or whatever, or Captain Planet. So like, at the end of the day, I like cars. I'm a car enthusiast. The Taycan just happens to be electric. Um, I do like to think that I am helping the planet, but that is not my motivation on why I purchased this vehicle. So that all in all is the build. That's the cost of the Porsche Taycan. Um, you know, this was perfect timing, interest rates, everything. Um, you know, putting money down on the car, just getting it to a good price point. I was able to stay within budget, um, even with adding on almost $23,000 worth of upgrades. So it was good to be able to add this on there and still stay within the budget that I had planned for. And, you know, I, I don't have any regrets. There are some things always that you're gonna wanna wish you added to the car, but in my mind, I'm thinking about the next vehicle. Um, you know, I don't have any I, any anticipation of selling the Taycan, but I will say that I, I would love a Turbo S. Um, my, my big car that I want is an Aventador SV, and so that's not a family car. So if I think about a family car, the rear wheel drive Taycan is perfect. Have the Lamb, have the wife with her vehicle, uh, and, and live happily ever after. But um, you never know, man. Like if, if a nice Turbo S comes about, I'm, I'm, I may go after it. The issue with ordering one is like 18 months minimum wait. And I'm not trying to wait that long. I could order a Turbo S right now. I feel like with what's going on in the economy and where things are, it's not overinflated. And I, I feel like I can get MSRP for it. That's not the case at a lot of places. As I've seen in the forums, there are people marking these cars up. but. I have a good relationship with my with with, with my sales associate, uh, just associates in general that support me, and so I was able to get this car from MSRP. If I wasn't able to get a Turbo S from MSRP, as long as it's not an astronomically high markup, I wouldn't have a problem paying for it. But I, I feel like the rear wheel drive is perfect right now. It's perfect. It's my first Porsche. It's my first sport car, supercar, whatever you want to say um, that that I have, and, and I'm loving that car right now. And, and I have no intentions of getting rid of it, but. We'll see what the future holds, but the next video that we will, will show is gonna be going through building the car. It's one thing to talk about it, it's one thing to live it. When I tell you building a car is an experience like no other, I don't care if you're at Lamborghini's, um, what is it called? I don't even know the, the name, I'll think of it, but they call their creation of a vehicle that uh, has a unique name that just seems luxurious, but Porsche's uh, ability, to be able to do a, a configurator and you know, a lot, and pretty much every place that I can imagine lets you configure a car and build it. It may not be as uh, in depth as some of these other car companies, but uh, there's nothing like being able to go online and build a car. I do it all the time for cars that aren't uh, in, in my place of uh, affordability right now, but just going through and knowing what I want and saving that PDF, that's the motivation that keeps me going. So I encourage each and every one of you Go in there and build that car. I don't care if you can afford it now or later. Build it, get into the habit of it. So when it is time, you ready, you got some familiarity with that. So that's it for today's video. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Sorry for the delay. Mom's doing well, I have an update. Hopefully she's out of the ICU by the end of this week. And then I'll have a new video of us going through the configurator, seeing what's changed, because some things have changed, some things are gone. Apparently Bose can't add it to the rear wheel drive anymore or any. Uh, Taycan for that matter. Supply chain issues, baby, that, that cause an issue. So yeah, we'll see what was changed on the configurator and we'll go through there. But for the time being, enjoy this video. Appreciate your support. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned and I'll be back soon.